Thanks for coming. I thought, uh, uh, first of all, it's the first time here to Blacksburg, and uh, my friend uh, Frank Beamer, he's got a uh, heck of a place here. That was that was that was a top tenner as far as top, maybe a top fiver as far as the emotion, the crowd, when the bus is coming in today. Uh, you know, I had high expectations because I talked to some folks that played here, and it certainly didn't let them down. Uh, they played really hard, both teams. Um, a little disappointed in our point of attack, a little bit on the offensive and defensive line. Uh, but overall, uh, uh, we'll take that win and, and against a very good team in a tough environment. I uh, would like to say this, that I love Braxton Miller. And uh, uh, when you have selflessness, er, he made a lot of decisions, as young people have to. And he did it for the best interest of his team in Ohio State. And that just when I, when I think about that, makes you feel good. Um, I, I love that kid, man. And uh, for, obviously, I love when he does a spin move and uh, ridiculous athletic ability. But... He broke down in there. He got real emotional. And, and the journey, it's the negative about football is that you don't see their faces. You see a helmet and sometimes a visor, and you don't get to see what this kid's all about. This kid's all about the right stuff. And I'm honored to coach him again for the fourth year, and uh, I love this guy. And uh, I know there are a bunch of other guys played well, but I just wanted to make sure everybody knows how. And I say I, I'm talking about our team. The guy got the third most votes on our team as far as being a captain. That tells you how much our guys think of him. Um, but that's all answering questions. Front row, Bill. Very close. I didn't really. Uh, we, we met twice uh, along the journey in training camp, and he was ahead. And JT really closed it and, and almost nudged back. And But the way I looked at it, um, uh, Cardell finished the season. Statistically, it was about identical. When I say that, I want to say 64% compared to 63%, or it was real close. And Cardell finished the season as a starter, and then I kind of started thinking for him to not take the first snap, he had to get beat out. And he wasn't beat out. It was very close. But we got two good players, and they're going to play. I almost put to JT in earlier, but there was such a pressure game. Like with Cardell's size, I thought he could get up over the top of that defensive front because they were all over the place again, and that was a decision. Front row, Dom. Urban, uh, you want to affect the quarterback Brewer knocked out of the game. Obviously, you don't want to see one. No, never. never. But, I mean, well, he killed us last year. You know, he's a guy that made a couple great throws and, and uh, got a lot of respect for him as a player. Uh, you're right. I think someone said he broke a collarbone or something, and that's horrible. That's the worst part of the starting game is the injury, so we wish him well. Uh, second row left, Clay. Yeah, only the second half. Was anything said the paint come off you in here at halftime? No, no. It was uh, – they were doing so – they were, they were moving. Now they were playing the bear, but they were uh, – last year they were bear straight up. And they were moving all over the place. They were slanting, we think, to the back. And so Ed Warner did a nice job, and uh, Tim Beck and the whole offensive staff of coming up with some things to uh, obviously hurt him a little bit. And uh, it was good to see Mike get a little isolation play on that uh, double cut. So, um, no, I think uh, it's a credit to our strength coach and the way he prepared him. You know, we, you know, I think it was 28 unanswered, and we were fresh as, that, as the game went on, which is a good sign what kind of shape we're in. Go ahead. Too many guys in the box to Give the ball to Zeke in the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's terrible, and I kept seeing that. And then when they play Bear Zero, there's two extra hats in there, and that's a lot of times when we ran the quarterback, and we did it with Braxton Miller a couple times too, because you're just you hand the ball off. There's two extra guys there, so um, we got to we got to do a better job. We we threw a couple early, and we just misfired them. You know, that's a high risk, high reward, and, and we did hit some big plays on them, but not enough. Far left, Tim. Yeah, Urban, did you see Braxton sort of grow into the moment as the night yeah. went on? I mean, did you see him a little – just what was your take on him as the game started and then, of course, the third quarter? Well, I mean, he's a, he's a guy that started his career and to get him to run around cones and lift weights, you know, he just didn't – you know, he wasn't a grinder, and he is now. Uh, but if you said, if I'm going to put you against that guy, he, he won't lose. So he's a, his greatest gift, he's as a competitor, and I saw that. I missed that for – because he was brilliant, you know, when I, you know, what was it, 2013 and 12. And, you know, this Ohio State football team, where we were, is if we didn't have him, we were, we were looking at a, because that was not good. Yeah. Two, in 2012, that offense was not, we did what we had to do. And Carlos got developed and all that. But that was Braxton right, Braxton left, or we would have been, a, you know, just above a 500 team. And did you see Cardale? <clears throat> what, just generally, what was your take on Cardale's game tonight? He was 9 out of 18 throwing, had the one pick. Uh, obviously made some plays with his feet, ran for yeah. 99 yards. Yeah. 
I thought, okay, I have to watch film. I'll give you an evaluation on him when we meet next week. I'd expect more. You know, the turnover, you just don't do that. You know, when you throw late across, the, you start scrambling around. But, um, you know, once again, it's a good team we played against. So we'll take it and, and get better. Steve. Yeah, Coach, uh, you guys are down at halftime, and the place is kind of buzzing. They maybe think they're going to upset you guys. And just how important was the play that Braxton made not many guys in college football could probably make that play and get open, get down the sideline, and just that kind of thing. Yeah, we had a couple of misfires, though, and that, that, like I said, they dare you to, you know, you have to be able to bust through that first level. And that's why Zeke, you know, Zeke only had 11 carries. That's not enough. we got to get him 20, 20 touches. Uh, but you have to get them off you to pay the price. And when you're 9 of 18 throwing, that's not good enough. So, we, you know, but uh, any time, uh, to answer your question, when it's a close game, you have to have athletes bust you out of it, and, and we did that today. Left side, Ari. <clears throat> you mentioned a minute ago that there was some thought into putting JT in, in the first half. How careful do you have to be moving forward about timing? And I think real careful. Back and forth and, you know, how much thought goes into, you know, just the timing of when these guys play? Oh, I, there's really not a formula, and that's uh, I, tr I mentioned. Uh, I think I told Kirk. You know, I said we're gonna whoever I, in my opinion, at that moment, because you can't have too many people's input, because everybody all it does is confuse the situation. If in that situation to drive the ball down the field to score, who should be in the game? And uh, JT has to stay warm, and if JT's in the game, Cardell has to stay warm. Is that the right thing to do? At this point, it is. It, 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 will that change and adapt throughout the year? I don't know. We'll, we'll, well, remains to be seen. Uh, last couple of questions. Uh, Doug, over here to the left. Urban, how did Cardale and JT handle? Oh, everything? unbelievable. And how did the team, do you think, how did they handle it? And when did you tell the team? I did not tell the team. You know, it's, uh, I think we, we operate on their, the present premise of uh, nine units strong, and the corners need to worry about the corners and play really well. The linebackers need to play really well as a unit. And the, I have to give a lot of credit to our coaching staff and the leaders. Of, they, they, it doesn't matter who's back there. Because Braxton played, uh, I want to say, five or six staffs at quarterback, too. And, and uh, uh, that's the good thing about this team right now. The culture, I, I want to keep my saying this, I want to bottle it. Because it's really good. They don't, they're, they're, all, they're into it. And uh, there's no locker room issues or who's the quarterback and all that. None of that. Zero. And both kids handled it great. You know, both of them said, uh, when I talked to them a week before, I even said before I announced, they said, whatever we can do to help this team win. Uh, kind of neat. Right. Mark, go ahead. Yeah, what, uh, what enabled your defense to do a good job getting some pressure on Brewer? And on the flip side, uh, after getting up some sacks for the Hokies last year, what, what did, enabled you guys to do a good job of protecting your quarterbacks? The first question is about how did we get pressure? Yeah, pressure. Well, we had a bunch of new guys starting. Taekwon Lewis and Sam Hubbard started new. Uh, we had uh, Tommy Shutt, so three of the four starting were new on the defensive front. Uh, Darren Lee, for, you know, you probably need to ask Luke that and uh, Chris Ash. Uh, I just saw him pressuring a quarterback for a time with uh, you know the transition offense quarter. I'm not. I'm really devoted right now to offense, and I I just I hear third down and then turn around and go. So that'd be a good question for Luke. But uh, I, I saw us pressure him as well. And on the flip side, your, your offensive line did a good job. Oh, I thought we did average. To be honest with you, I didn't. Uh, I didn't think we played. It, it's all depends on your expectation level, and ours is. And, and they'd be the first one. I'd be disappointed they came and said, "Boy, we played great." Not taking anything away from that talented. There's a there's a high draft pick in there that the defensive end, he's going to be a, a late first, early second. I'm hearing, and he plays like it. So they're really good, but we got to play better. And one final question, middle back, Andy. Uh, how, how cognizant do you have to be when you're talking about or thinking about maybe putting JT in earlier? Of if I go with a quick hook, it might hurt Cardell's yeah. like A lot of thought. You know, and that's I don't. Uh, you know, that's I'm gonna have a constant conversation with them. I have. I think he would know that's not because uh, there might come a time we have to do that, and uh, that's something that you know this journey is gonna be interesting. We got to make sure that they're we're not, and I'm not screwing it up. That's a great question. Uh, right now, I don't have an answer.